This video explains the milestone schedule and acceptance criteria template that can be used in a project charter. All project charters should include a high level schedule and or state the key milestones. This should be brief and not too detailed, enough for the project team and key stakeholders to understand how the project needs to be planned and scheduled. If the project progresses, this schedule will be expanded and detailed in Stage 2 planning, usually using software such as Microsoft Project. In this instance, we will apply the method used in Kloppenborg's Contemporary Project Management textbook. The main headings are Milestone, Completion Date, Stakeholder Judge and Acceptance Criteria. In the first row, you describe the current situation that requires the project. This highlights and briefly sums up the problem. For example, something exists but doesn't work well, or a desire exists for something new. The description written in the schedule should be short but easy to understand. Here are two examples. The organization's records are paper-based and decentralized. The organization's current head office lease expires in six months and a new head office premises needs to be secured and move in ready. Second, go to the last row and describe the project at its successful completion. This is the ideal future state that will deliver the project benefits. This may be a specific outcome or it could describe the end of a phase, depending on the type of project. This should also be very short. Using our examples, there are electronic centralised records. This also flows down to an ultimate goal that is focused on better performance or superior outcomes for the business such as seamless information flow throughout the organisation. In our second example, we have a move-in ready head office and the head office supports collaboration and productivity. Then, describe the acceptance criteria for the final project deliverables. The acceptance criteria signifies that this milestone can be signed off by the stakeholder judge, so it should be specific and easy to recognise. Focus on the most important stakeholder or stakeholders and acceptance criteria. Using our examples, the ability to enter and retrieve information from all departments. The new head office is set up according to specifications and requirements and is move-in ready. Next, determine a few points in the milestone column where quality needs to be verified. This will usually be three to eight points depending on the project. These should also align to the project's deliverables. We can see this here in the digital records example. The deliverables may be needs assessment, hardware selection, vendor selection, installation and configuration of the system, conversion of paper-based files to digital, testing the system and providing training. These would also be the major deliverables. In our head office example, these may be a needs assessment, getting the office lease secured, office design, fit out and installation and completion of the office fit out. These milestones could vary depending on the scope of the project. For each milestone, determine the primary stakeholder or stakeholders and how the resulting deliverable will be judged. For example, the needs assessment should produce a list of needed features. Operations management will judge if the list is appropriate to indicate progression to hardware selection. The acceptance criteria for hardware selection is that there is a confirmed hardware choice and assigned contract, and so forth. Finally, determine expected completion dates for each milestone. It's important that this is realistic, avoid being overly optimistic or pessimistic, 
and a project manager will usually consult with others to determine reasonable time frames and dates. On this project, for example, the completion date for converting manual to digital files is 31st of August. Presuming this activity could commence in late February, this allows approximately six to seven months to complete the conversion. Alternatively, if the conversion needs to occur after installation and configuration, this allows approximately six weeks for conversion. This time frame may be reasonable or not based on the number of files to be converted and the number of employees assigned to do the conversion. The project manager and team would need to be clear about the time it will actually take to complete the conversion, as this is likely to be an enormous activity in a large organisation.